the first talk that he was assigned is really the results from the ACES trial, which is a randomized placebo-controlled double-blind phase three, really looking at the utilization of the combination of concomitant ap apalutamide and abiraterone plus prednisone versus abiraterone in, uh, with ADT in patients with chemo-naive metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. Uh, so the background of this is, as many of you know, we, you know, we know that prostate cancer in general is is an and is a hormonal disease, and it's driven by the androgen receptor. MSR, MCRP, CRPC, castration resistant prostate cancer, is driven by activated androgen receptors and also elevated due to mutations of intra, intratumoral androgen production. However, the overall population is very heterogeneous in terms of AR resistance and sensitivity. Apalutamide and ABI plus prednisone are approved prostate cancer therapies in the setting in terms of monotherapy for metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. However, if you lump them, they really, we like to talk about them. We, we've used novel hormonal therapy. We've used androgen signaling inhibitors. We, I, I, I personally like the term androgen receptor targeting agents because we know that abiraterone is a synthesis inhibitor and apalutamide is a receptor blocker. So this concept of androgen annihilation, and I think that's something that Dave and Dan have been talking about for years, really uh, has got a lot of interest based upon the fact that we're blocking it at both production, we're blocking it at the receptor level, but this concept of intratumoral production based upon a mutation really, uh, you know, really is significant. So basically, the ACES trial is a phase three study comparing, uh, comparing uh, these agents, and the primary endpoint is RPFS. So again, when you look at the, when the criteria for this study, is it was close to 1,000 patients. It was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled. It was randomized one-to-one, -one, and the inclusion criteria were men with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, progression on ADT, as, as defined by Prostate Cancer Working Group 2. ECOG status, like all of these trials, were less than two, pain score, of less than three, no prior chemotherapy or androgen uh, targeting agents for castration resistant disease. Stratification were presence or absence of visceral METs, ECOG status, as well as geographic region, North America, UK, or in the rest of the world. Again, they were randomized to receive this combination of apalutamide, again, which is an androgen receptor blocker, and, uh, and abiraterone acetate plus prednisone, and abiraterone is an androgen biosynthesis inhibitor that blocks it not only at the testicle, but, in th but also in theory can be, block can be blocking intratumoral production versus, uh, and again, continued on ADT versus placebo plus abiraterone prednisone alone. Primary endpoint is RPFS as determined by the investigator, secondary endpoints OS, time to initiation of cytotoxic chemotherapy, time to pain progression, time to chronic opioid use. Exploratory endpoints include time to clinical progression, time to first subsequent anti-cancer therapy, time to second progression free survival, decline in PSA, time to PSA progression, and some pre-specified subgroup analysis by patient characteristics and tumor signatures, FACP, uh, pa you know, patient reported quality outcomes, as well as safety. So this was the timeline. Uh, basically, this trial was initiated in 2015 with randomization. Uh, this was a worldwide study from 2014 through 2016. Uh, and then primary endpoints, we had you know, predetermined analysis in March of 2018, and the final analysis is in was in September of 2020, with median follow-up at that point was 55 months. So this is, the, this is the demographics of both groups, and again, this is pretty similar to what you might expect for this particular patient population. The median age was about 71 in both groups. Gleason scores, uh, again, uh, the, about 50% of these, greater than 50% of these patients uh, were a higher grade Gleason, probably following into the unfavorable intermediate and high risk. Unknown was about 5%. Again, very highly functioning patient population, pretty high PSA values relative to uh, this disease in, in the mid-30s. 
and this was the disease status at the at, at baseline and again when you look at visceral disease here it was about 15 percent uh in the yeah, in the uh combined arm about 15 percent in the abbey arm and when you break that down further the majority of these uh, thankfully were more pulmonary as most of you know that treat these patients lung cancer or excuse me liver mets is a is a very poor prognostic factor and then this is the metastatic stage at diagnosis um, based upon uh, te uh, technetium-based bone scan and CT. So when we look at the primary endpoint, the, which is basically radiographic progression or death, the primary endpoint at, of, of RPFS was met at a medium of 25.7 months follow-up. In the abiraterone arm only, it was 16.6 .6 months, whereas the, I will call the androgen annihilation arm, which is basically apalutamide and abiraterone plus prednisone, uh, was 22.6 months. That was a hazard ratio of 0.69, again, which translates to a 31% risk reduction. Again, when you look at, uh, this is the forest plot, again, everything on the left favors the combination arm of apalutamide and abiraterone and prednisone, and highlighting here the presence of visceral disease, uh, again, this clearly favored the androgen uh, annihilation arm. In terms of long-term follow-up, again, uh, at 55 months, again, that's September of 2020, uh, again, this 30% this, uh, risk reduction of RPF and, uh, RPFS and death continued to hold. When you looked at OS, the final analysis at 55 months, it had a similar OS, however, between patients uh, with APA and ABI versus ABI and prednisone alone. Secondary endpoints were very similar across both groups. PSA outcomes, again, when you look at the waterfall plots, uh, when looking down here, a confirmed decline of a PSA 50 in the, in the androgen annihilation arm. It was about 80%. Abby alone uh, was about 73%. Undetectable PSA slightly favored the androgen annihilation arm at 25%. Median time to PSA progression, again, very similar for both groups. This is the pre-specified baseline subgroups favoring APA, or excuse me, basically the androgen an annihilation arm. And again, biomarkers uh, uh, were also measured relative to RPFS as well as overall survival. Uh, the majority of patients who discontinued treatment received subsequent life-prolonging therapy. Uh, and again, that included both uh, continued taxanes using either cabazitax or docetaxel, as well as the you, you could have uh, also received um, radiopharmaceuticals autologous immunotherapy. Some patients even uh, also received further androgen receptor targeting agents. Again, the uh, safety profiles, again, looking at specifically targeting, looking at grade threes and fours at, at the two arms, uh, pretty similar to both groups, pointing out specifically fatigue, which is the one we commonly see with these drugs. Hypertension, it seems to be pretty consistent with these therapies. Skin rash, we've talked about uh, in great deal yesterday. Cardiac disease, again, we have to be really cognizant of that. Fractures and osteoporosis. This is the fact P, and again, I think we need to be more cognizant. We need to start doing a better job of looking at quality of life, uh, patient reported outcomes. So the conclusions is that uh, the ACES trial meds primary endpoint of radiographic progression-free survival as assessed by investigators in chemotherapy naive metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. RPFS was extended by six months in primary per, per protocol analysis and by 7.4 months in the updated final analysis. Uh, RPFS benefit was observed versus, or versus abiraterone, abiraterone acetate plus prednisone alone. Secondary endpoints, including OS, were similar. No new safety signals were observed. Uh, slightly higher rates of treatment um, AEs were seen with the androgen, androgen annihilation arm. However, the quality of life was comparable between both treatment arms. Clinical biomarker subgroups of patients may derive better, greater benefit with the androgen annihilation arm. So again, I want uh, so. In, in, on behalf of Dr. Henderson, we'd like to thank the study, the patients who participated in the study, as well as the folks from Janssen uh, with their guidance and their support for this talk.